Hello, welcome to Strong Flow Vinyasa. And today we're going to be getting into the second chakra. And um, so this chakra deals a lot with the hips. It deals with the internal organs that sit inside the pelvis. So it's going to be the lower um, intestines, the lower part of your digestive system. It's going to include the sexual organs. Um, the kidneys are going to be in there. Um, so lots of flow. And um, so flow is one of the... Um, words you can associate with the second chakra. So we'll be doing some flowing today. Um, I will be giving you different affirmations throughout regarding the second chakra. You can always come to the color orange, which is the color of the second chakra. Coincidentally, I have that color behind me and a nice mandala. Um, you can also come up with your own intention. Um, there's no rules and there's no way for me to know if that's what you're doing or not. So. Uh, do what you can, do what you need, don't worry about the rest. Blocks, you might um, get away with just one today. Um, I've got two, one on each side, just so for when I switch sides, it's there. We will all use a strap um, towards the end, so I would have that handy. And then once you're ready, sitting up nice and tall, zipping up that front body. And as I settle in, I want to relax to the jaw. Relax through the shoulders, relax through the hips. As I breathe, I want to find some expansion in that rib cage. If you're not sure how to do that, envision a health provider taking a stethoscope to your back and asking you to breathe deep so they can listen to your lungs better. And that's exactly how you're breathing. So very important when those muscles between the ribs, the intercostal muscles are more pliable and flexible. Not only do you breathe better, but you twist better. You twist where you're supposed to twist up in the thoracic and then you don't compensate by doing it down in the low back in the lumbar. Let's take a big inhale and reach. Exhale, let's get a nice side bend towards the left. So I'm keeping both hip bones anchored. I'm reaching my top arm. I'm keeping that a little bit long. I get a little bit more connection here than when if I just let it go here. And I'm trying to take my rib cage out if I can. So breathing. Expanding. And then you're going to choose where you go from here. Do you stay here? Do you side bend deeper? Do you choose to open up towards the back? Maybe you want to kind of move the arm around here, finding a better spot for you. Or do you want to tilt the pelvis back, scoop in the belly button, forehead in the direction of the knee, getting a little C curve roll here. Inhale, open. Exhale, move through center. Go right into the other side and reach. Breathing and expanding and knowing already if you've got one side, it's a little bit more flexible or a little tighter than the other. Totally normal. This is my side that tends to be <coughs> excuse me, a little bit tighter. So sometimes when I try to get into it with lateral flexion, which is what we're doing here, I tend to cough, releasing what my body doesn't need. Good. And then from here, you choose staying here, siding, bending deeper, opening up or finding that C curve roll, forehead in the direction of the knee, but not touching and open, and move through center. Big inhale and reach. Exhale, rotate towards the left. Arms are gonna come down, rolling shoulders back, looking behind you, breathing and expanding. Remember, if you can't expand the rib cage here into the twist, you've gone too deep into the twist. You can bring in that Ujjayi Pranayama here. That would feel good to you. And then once you're ready, inhale and lift. Exhale, come to center. Other side, arms come down. Rolling shoulders back. Looking a little bit behind you. Try to keep the shoulder back a little bit here. That will also help. And once you're ready, inhale to lift. 
exhale, come to center. Good. So we're going to go to a seated version of cat cow and a little bit of a spinal roll. I'm going to turn to the side so you can better see what I'm doing. So I do have crisscross applesauce legs. My arms are long, my hands are on my shoulders. I've got a relatively long spine here. So we're gonna use the arms as leverage to get into our cat cow. So as you inhale, taking the chest forward, rolling shoulders back, maybe looking up. So here's the equivalent of your cow, the tug here with the arm. Exhale round, there's your cat pose. Arms stay long the whole time, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good. Now, we're going to keep our hands right here. Again, we're going to use the arm as leverage to do a little bit of a spinal roll. So from here, I'm just going to take the chest forward and roll. So I'm using those arms as leverage. It helps you get in there just a little bit more. And your hip should be moving with you. So that pelvis should be moving around. It should not be stationary. Let's reverse direction. So the first affirmation I will give you here is, I live a passionate life. I live a passionate life. If you're not really sure. Ask yourself, what are you passionate about? And then you're living your life around what you're passionate about. Good. From here, once you're ready, good. Shake out anything that needs to be shook out. Good. Come forward. We're going to come to a more traditional cat cow. You can always bring in a knee cushion here if you need one. By spreading the fingers nice and wide. Rooting through the knuckles of the pinky, pointer, and thumb. Knees are about hip width apart. A little bit wider. Your back is a little cranky. Top to the feet are down. And then from here, from this nice neutral spine, belly button is in. Inhale. Taking the chest forward, keeping the pelvis back. Exhale and round. Inhale. Exhale. Now you can stay with this one. Good. I'm going to go to semicircle cat cow. Inhaling on the cow. Exhale. I'm going to round. Sinking through the hips. Moving into the other side and reversing. So your spine is involved here if you're doing semicircle cat cow. And you don't have to move as quickly as me. You just go at your pace. Yeah. And then coming back to center. Yeah. When you're ready, we're going to take this right into downward facing dog. So if you're taller, take a half a hand's width or full hand's width forward. Otherwise, you can stay here. I'm going to tuck the toes. I'm shifting back. I'm pressing in and forward into the hands. I'm rooting through the knuckles of pinky, corner, and thumb as I lift my hips and my knees. From here, I'm pressing evenly to big toe and pinky toe mounds. Knees can be a little bit bendy. I'm pressing away from the floor, shoulders away from the ears, elbows turn forward, head and neck are free. Belly button is in. Let's lift the heels and lower the heel. Getting a little bit more ankle mobility in here. Good. We'll go right into walking the dog, bending one knee, lengthening one leg, trying to keep the hips even to the floor. We don't want them to sway side to side. And then from here, we'll be at ease. Take some nice big breaths here if the Ujjayi is part of your practice. Bring that in. Firm down dog. Inhale, look forward, bend the knee, walk. Step your feet forward to make your hands come to a block or two here. If you can't touch the floor comfortably, let the knees bend and just shake the head, yes. Shake the head, no. Maybe grabbing opposite elbows here. If it's okay to sway side to side, take that sway. So I live a passionate life. What are you passionate about? And then from here, once you're ready, we'll come back in, we'll release. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway, hands to floor, block, shins or thighs. 
nice long back at hill and bow and i'm going to bend my knees today when i bow inhale lift and lengthen halfway one more time at hill and bow from here planting the feet get into the legs long back as we ride coming all the way up exhale hands to heart center good now finding your breath your mountain your intention all right so from here <clears throat> We're going to go through a few sun salutes here. So about three. Okay, you choose taking or skipping the flow. Otherwise, find your movement. Big inhale and we'll reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip the flow. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage the glutes, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, and we'll lift. Exhale, and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip the flow. From downward facing dog when you're ready. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hand. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, and about. Inhale, root engage and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more. Inhale, and we'll lift. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip the flow. And then once you've made it back to your downward facing dog, drop those knees. Find a nice child's pose. Knees can be together as wide as a mat or somewhere in between. You can take your arms long in front of you or hands back by the ankles you too. And breathe and expand that rib cage. Zip up that front body. So the second chakra is our creativity center. Okay. So how about saying to yourself, I am art. I am art. The body itself is an art form. And by art, I don't mean about your ability or inability to draw, paint, sculpt, you know, that kind of art. Just think of yourself and your body right now as a work of art. Nature's work of art. From down your child's pose, we're going to find a downward facing dog. Okay. And then from here, once you're ready, good. we are going to go slowly into a dancing warrior float. So the first time is going to be really slow, so everybody knows what they're doing. And then the second and third time, we'll pick that up just a little bit, okay? So left leg's going to lift three point. Let's open the hip a little bit here and make this a little, little bit better. So we're just going to open and close. Open, press through that right side and close. Remember the twistings from the torso. Keep the shoulders even and just hold for a moment. Good. Now take the hip and knee back even to the floor. Inhale. Exhale. Round. Step or pick up and put the left foot forward between the hands. We're going to warrior prep that back leg about 45-ish degrees or turning it maybe like towards the front corner of your mat. Really get into the feet and the legs. As you rise, we're going to come into a warrior two here. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and bend this front knee, although you don't have to do that. My hip, knees, and toes are tracking. Knee is tracking towards the pinky toe. I can look down and see that toe. So if I can't, that foot needs to be more forward. My front hip is going to come back. So my back hip is going to come forward a little bit. You're at a little bit of an angle. And then I'm going to open the chest and reach. Yeah. Okay. So finding your warrior two. Okay. 
Wait, I think I said that wrong. Yeah. The front hip is going to come forward a little bit. Back hip is going to come back. There, there we go. I wondered what that felt. Strange. Good. So holding, breathing, zipping up that front body. And then when you're ready, with palms turning towards the ceiling, a bent front knee or a lengthened front leg, try not to shift the hips. We're going to take it back into exalted. I'm going to reach, reach up towards that ceiling. I live a passionate life. I am art. I am a creative force. I am a creative force. From here, inhale, exhale, come back to the warrior two. Good. We're going to take this into a humble warrior. So hands are going to come behind. You can clasp them. You can press them down. You can roll the shoulders back and lift them. You take that where it feels good for your wrists and your shoulders. Pressing into the feet. Good. And I'm just going to come in here. Now, depending on your balance, you might have to take a hand down here. That's okay. Good. Shoulders are away from the ears. Good. Try to lengthen that torso a little bit. Belly button is in. Stay with the breath. Come back to the color orange. Let yourself build a little heat. And when you're ready, pressing through the legs, coming back, warrior two. I'm going to lengthen my front leg and take it back to exalted. Now, you can also keep that knee bent if you want more challenge. And then it's ready, inhale, exhale, finding your warrior two. And we're going to find extended side angle. So I'm pressing through the back here. Good. I'm lengthening. I'm lengthening. My spine is long. Forearm can come to the thigh. Hand can come to a block, any height or the floor. Outside is going to be easier than the inside. And if you've got your hand down on a block or to the floor, press the arm and leg to each other. Get into that front heel. Get into the back edge of the back foot. Looking down at that front foot, lengthening that front leg. We'll all do that here. Take it back, exalt it. And then from here, inhale, warrior two. Exhale, we'll cartwheel that down. Good. Plant the hands, swivel up the back foot, front foot steps back. You choose. Take or skip a flow. And then from here, when you're ready, we're going to take that all to the other side. Now, I'm just going to switch sides here. From down dog, right leg's going to lift three points, bending that knee. We're going to open to the right and close. Open to the right and close. Right shoulder stays down as best as you can. Open to the right and close. Open to the right. Hold here for a moment. And breathing. And then once you're ready, hip, knee, and toe are going to come back even to the floor. And we're going to round step or pick up and put the right foot forward between the hands. Warrior prepping that back leg. When you're ready, rise. And we'll find warrior two. Good. So the front hip will come back a little bit. Back hip will come forward. Good. Fine. Warrior two is probably going to be the best one on this side. Well, I let my inner child play. I let my inner child play. And watch your alignment here. Knee is over behind the ankle. Knee tracks towards pinky toe. You should look down and be able to see that. So palms up without shifting the hips. Take it back exalted. Reaching. Breathing.
Inhale, exhale, finding warrior two, going into humble. So hands are gonna come behind. You can clasp them, you can let them rest there. Press down, open up, find where it's good for you. Good, and then from here, pressing through the back leg, long spine, we're gonna come into the center part of that right leg. Again, if you need to take a hand down here, you can always do that. Could you lengthen the torso a little bit more here? Because it's core work, it's leg work, it's breath work. Shoulder work. And once you're ready, pressing through those legs, coming back up, finding that warrior two, lengthening the front leg or keeping it bent as you take it back and reach. Once you're ready, good. Coming back, warrior two, going into extended side angle. So pressing through the back, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Remember, forearm can come down here. You can bring in a block. Then we'll open up. Hand can also come to the floor. Press the arm and leg into each other if you've got your hand down on the block or to the floor. Inhale, exhale, looking down. We'll all lengthen here as we come up, coming back. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, cart roll back down. Good. Cleaning the hands, swiveling up back foot, taking the front foot back. You choose, take or skip a flow. Good. All right. Now, from here, we're going to take this into the Dancing Warrior sequence. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the other side. So from here, you will not see me switch sides because this is kind of a, a continuous movement thing. Um, you choose to take out any component of what we just did. If it gets too fast, we're going to move on the breath. Okay? And have fun with it. So if you mess it up, no worries. I mess it up in personal practice all the time. So from here, when you're ready, left leg lift three points, bending that knee, round, step, or pick up and put that foot forward between the hands. Warrior prepping. When you're ready, rise. Find your warrior two. Your warrior two form here is everything. Good. Front hip comes back, back hip comes forward, opening the chest. Good. Warrior two is the key to your success in dancing warrior flow. So here we go. Inhale. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, humble. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, extended. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel it down. Swivel. Good. Find your flow if you're taking it. From down dog, right leg's gonna lift three points. Step or pick it up and put it forward. Warrior press it. And we'll rise. Again, find your warrior two. Front hip's gonna come back. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, humble. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, extended. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel down. Step, take or skip a flow. Good. One more time each side, left leg lift. Step or pick up and put that foot forward between the hands. Warrior prep, rise, find your warrior two. And here we go, inhale. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, humble. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, extended. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale. Take or skip a flow. I'm going to skip this one. 
Last one, last time. Right leg lift, three points. Take it forward. Warrior prep. Rise. Find your warrior two. Get set. Inhale. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, humble. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, extended. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel. Take or skip a flow. Woo. And taking that back. Once you come back to down dog, drop those knees. Child's pose. Woo. All right, so get your home. Good. So just up that front body. Find the expansive gift of that ribcage. And now while we're down here, we're going to take this into a puppy pose. So this is one I often put in the beginning of a class, but we're going to put this in the middle here today. So different things for different people. Okay. And some of you are just going to take forearms to block. Hips are going to stay over the knees. And it's kind of like a uh, cow pose. So chest is coming forward, pelvis is tilting back. Okay. Some of you may not need the block because you can take your forearms to the ground and do that, okay? Next step is you can take a block right under the chest or if you've got a blanket with you and you've got it folded this way, fold it again, that will give you a softer surface um, to put on your chest if you need it. You can always stick a pillow under there, but I will show you what this looks like. So from here, good. Support's gonna come under the chest. Arms are gonna start to come long now, okay? And then some of you can take the chest to the floor and you may not need a prop. Good. And maybe this is you. So full puppy, the chin is on the floor. If that's not good for your neck, take your forehead there. Good. This one is one that took me several years to master. My back had to open up um, with flexibility in order for me to do this one. There's some of you out there that have a back issue where this kind of deep extension is not a good idea. So please don't go there if that's you. Pain, numbness, tingling, burning, any funny business like that, also not good. And then from here, good. We'll take the front heel down if you took the chin, hands under the shoulders. We'll come up from there, really flex if you can. That feels good after a deep extension. And then once you're ready, find your downward facing dog. Taking a moment here from the down dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen, exhale, little bow, pressing through the feet and legs, coming up, exhale, hands to heart center. Excellent work. So I'm going to reset my blocks here to each side. We're going to go into triangle here. And so the blocks on each side just helps me not have to reset. So let's come to a nice wide-legged standing position. So we're gonna come out wide. Good. So my feet are parallel to the short edges of the mat. My toes are in alignment with each other. Give yourself a little test here. You want ankles and wrists to generally be in that position. Some of you might be more open in the hips and come out a little bit wider. That's totally fine. As long as you're pressing on the outer edges of the feet, you wanna be strong if you're going wider. It's not always about the flexibility, it's about the stability. So we're going to zip up, inhale, exhale, pressing through those outer edges of the feet. And we're going to come down, finding that wide-legged forward fold. Good. Now from here, turning elbows forward. Elbows are going to bend straight back. Find yours. Maybe elbows touch the floor. Maybe they don't. Keep a long torso. Let the head and neck be free. So something you can say to yourself here is, I embrace my sensuality. I embrace my sensuality. You can also embrace your sexuality. The sexual organs are included in the second chakra. And then from here, we'll come up. Good. From here, let's go right into a twist. 
So I'm going to take my right hand under my face. I'm going to shift my hips to the left. I'm pressing away. I'm going to open, finding that twist. And coming back down, hips are going to be even to the floor. Left hand under the face, shift the hips to the right, pressing through, opening up. And taking that down, hips even to the floor, little bend in the knees, walk the hands back up. Good. So we're going to take triangles to the left side first. So I'm going to turn my left toes, knees, and hips out. My right leg is going to come in. Good. So once I'm here, and you can kind of test where you are by doing your little uh, warrior stance. Good. So from here, front hip's going to come back, back hip's going to come forward. Root your feet in like you're trying to rip your bat apart from one end to the other. Same arm as leg. Good. Let's press into the feet. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. When you can come no more, take a thigh, a chin, a block at any height. The floor inside is a little bit deeper rotation than outside, so be mindful of that. And we'll open up. I didn't move my block today on this side. Good. Consider a stacking of the shoulders here. Well, I possess the ability, power, and knowledge to create. I possess the ability, power, and knowledge to create. And then from here, looking down at that front foot, putting a bend in that front knee, and we'll come back up. Good. Left foot in, right foot out, just switching sides. So find that little warrior position that'll kind of give you your base. And then once you're ready, Front hip's going to come back, back hip's going to come forward. We're zipping up, same arm as leg. And we're going to reach, 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 reach. When you can come no more, take a thigh shin, block or the floor. Again, inside is a little bit deeper rotation than the outside. Find yours. And you want a long spine here. Okay, this is not a forward fold. It's a twist, it's a balance, it's a hip opener. Okay, if you don't have a long spine, come up a little bit until you do. And then once you're ready, looking down at that front foot, putting a bend in that front knee, coming back up, hips, knees, and toes are going to turn back in. Good. Find that little space, nice little star. And then from here, once you're ready, hands to the waist. You can heel toe, heel toe everything in or hop it together. We're going to make our way to the floor and stay down there. So from the top of the mat, okay. big inhale and we'll reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, roll out. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip the last flow of this class. And once you've come down, one more time, drop those knees. Find your nice child's pose. Let this one be a little bit more of a relaxing child pose for you. So zipping up that front body. I'm still going to keep that zip. But I'm going to relax a little bit more into the upper body. Banning the breath if you can. And whenever you're ready, hands under the shoulders. We're going to press up. Good. So from here, we're going to come into a boat pose. A boat pose. So actually, you know what? Let's do a low lunge first before we go to a boat pose. So let's just out, stretch out the hip flexors first before we go into the boat pose. So from here, you can always use a block if you want to have that. Um, I'm going to start by taking the left foot forward. Good. And I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to be right here. Now, if you're someone that's super, super tight and doesn't have a lot of movement, just move forward and back a few times first and then try to come back in. Yeah. Nice long torso, we're zipping up. We're stretching the hip flexor and psoas on the side. And we'll step out of there. Let's do that on the other side. So right foot's gonna come forward. Good, 
Again, if you need to rock forward and back a couple times first, do so. Otherwise, you can come right in there. Use your block if you need to for balance support. Pull the buttons in. I actively express my creativity. I actively express my creativity. So going back to creativity, not necessarily being drawing, painting, those kinds of things. How creative are you when you organize and clean things out? How are you with the layout of your house? How do you accessorize your outfits? All of those things are creative outlets. Good. So now, now that we're stretched out a little bit, Let's find that boat pose. So again, you can also always dock your boat, taking your hands behind you for support, or you can zip up, good, find your boat. So I'm gonna hold on today, but you may not wanna hold on. You may wanna release and that's okay. I've got a nice long spine here, so I'm not dipping into the low back. Shoulders are away from the ears. I'm zipped up nice and tight into that front body. A little bit more. Woo and then once you're ready, we'll come out of that boat. Good. We're going to take this right onto our back. So we're going to bridge, and this is going to be a freestyle bridge. So if you know that you've got a supportive bridge, <coughs> excuse me, um, in your practice um, where you want to put the low back here um, or up here, you can have that block handy. Otherwise, you will not need any more props, but do take, I shouldn't have said that. We're going to use the strap. We're not going to use the block before unless you're going to use it for bridge. So I'm going to take this down. Okay. Now, I'm just going to rock, rock side to side. So when you come into the bridge, this can be any bridge of your choice. Arms can be down. You can have robot arms. You can use your strap or maybe not the strap if you want to reach for the ankle bind. Same thing for the hand bind underneath. You can follow me for a full um, back bend if you want to do that. But just make sure wherever you're going, hips, knees, and toes are tracking here. With the exception of the ankle bind, um, which do require your ankles to be in closer, make sure they're not in too close or too far away. Make sure you're not going out wider and turning everything out. So we're still in parallel. Okay. So from here, when you're ready, inhale, exhale, find your bridge. Breathing. Breathing. Come back to that color orange. Good. And then from here, based on where you went with your bridge, it's going to determine how you carefully come out of your bridge. Bring the knees back into the chest and we'll rock, rock side to side. Good. Now, grabbing your feet. So your feet are going to come together here little supine cobbler pose. If this is too much, just grab the ankles. So finding me, belly button is in. Getting into that, it's part of the second chakra. Now I'm gonna give you an option. You can stay here in the supine body can a little bit longer or the happy adult, um, if you grabbed the shins, or you can take your feet or your toes and find a happy baby here. Okay, now, those of you that cannot do a deep squat when you're on your feet, that Molossima squat, this should look like to you an on your back version of that Molossima squat, right? It's the same thing, maybe just a little bit less pressure in certain joints. So as long as you don't have a knee issue where a healthcare provider has told you not to take, you know, a squat deeper um, than the knees or something like that, then this is a nice one to practice in order to help you get into that molecular squat. So from here, I'm going to carefully release. We're gonna grab our strap. I'm gonna start by taking my left leg long, now you can always keep it bent if you need to do that. And we're gonna take my right foot into the strap. And we've got a lot of hamstring work today. So 
So we're going to stretch it, um, or at least from a forward perspective, we're going to stretch it um, in different ways. So take those straps into the right hand. The belly button is in. Both hips are going to stay grounded, taking that right leg out to the right. Good. Now you can find your grip where you need to find it. Wiggle around so you can find it. Breathing. You're ready, we'll bring that back up. Good, we're gonna switch out the hand. Find just the 45 degree arc over, not the twist. We're gonna do a different twist in a moment, but find your arc over, find your spot. And what about, I am able to give and receive pleasure. I am able to give and receive pleasure. And it doesn't always have to be sexual pleasure, but sometimes it does. We'll come back up. Good. From here, just slip that foot out of that strap, cross that right ankle over the left knee. We're going to find a figure four. So you can stay here if this is what you need. You can bring it in and be here. You can bind through here. Good. Try to keep the upper body grounded. If you're binding, it's okay to rock side to side. If you want to do that, pointing the toes towards their knee. So right toes point towards the right knee, left toes point towards the left knee. If you're ready, good, we'll release. Good. We're going to do all of that now. Actually, let's come to the figure four stretch. Good. So we're back in figure four, right foot over that left knee, and let's twist to the left. Yes, I want to feel that right through here, right through here, the two L's. There's something else to consider with the exception of bridge or, you know, shoulder stand, one of those inversions. If you're lying your head on the floor and you can't be there with a longer neck because your chin wants to come up here like this, it would really be a great idea if you use a skinny block or a folded blanket or something like that under there as cushion so that your cervical spine is in better alignment. Okay, so now we're going to take these straps and we're going to do all of that on the other side. So left foot into the left strap. Good. I'm going to take my right leg long, find your grip, belly button is in, both hips stay grounded. Take that out to the left side. And we'll take that up, get switch, arc over, finding the 45 degrees. This is my tighter side today for sure. And once you're ready, let's take that back up. Good. Removing that foot from the strap. Let's come into figure four. Figure four. So from here, find your figure four that you need on this side. Pointing the toes towards their knees. It's okay to rock if you want to rock your figure four. Breathing. Uh, 
Well, I can go with the flow. I can go with the flow. Water, liquid, is associated with the second chakra. And when you're ready, good, we'll take that down. Good, going in the figure four twist here. Let's take that all the way over to the right. Keeping left shoulder grounded, maybe looking to the left. And we'll come back up. Yeah. And then from here, good. we're going to go into our Shavasana. So I am going to bring this in for a neck pillow. I don't technically need it. I just feel better when I have one. And then you can let everything come long and flop open. You can put a bend in the knees. You could be on your side or the belly. Be where you can be comfortable for a few moments without fidgeting. And then the last little thought I'm going to give you here is my freedom is aligned with universal flow. My freedom is aligned with universal flow. Taking some deep breaths. Choose stillness. So gently take head and neck from side to side. Choose stillness or invite movement of fingers and toes. Choosing stillness. Or bringing knees into the chest. Choosing to keep the upper body grounded, or maybe you want to lift it up into a full body pattern. And choosing stillness, moving any props out of the way, and reaching long. Reach, 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 pointing and flexing through the feet, bending and stretching through the hands, trolling wrists and ankles in one direction, and then in the other. And when you're ready, bending in both knees, and you choose rolling over to the right or the left, the side that works best for you in this moment, taking all the time that you need. And when you're ready, pressing up into a comfortable seat, whatever that looks like for you. <clears throat> Finding that nice tall sit, noticing how you feel. And coming back to that color orange one more time. Fingertips to the side, palms turning up. Inhale, reach, 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 and lengthen, touching palms together. As you bring those hands down, stop the thumbs right at the forehead for good and true thought, to the lips for good and kind words, and to the heart for open and loving heart. Knowing no effort on this mat is ever wasted, no gain is ever reversed. May you be safe. May you stay well. May you have a wonderful day, week, evening, month ahead. Thank you so much. Namaste.